So what elements do we have on the moon? It, it's basically the same elements as uh, on Earth, um, by and large. So in terms of um, if you wanted to build something on the moon, if you have to ship everything from Earth, you're never going to get a colony going. It'd be much easier if you can build things in situ. Live off the land. Live off the land. And for most of the elements, like all the iron you want and the aluminium, and that's not going to be a problem. No. Um, the main problem is going to be energy sources. That's right. Now, right now, most rockets are powered using chemical fuels, hydrocarbons, um, and generally speaking, those come from life, and they're there's no life on the moon. There's probably almost certainly never been life on the moon. Has never had an atmosphere. So the question of where you're going to get energy from is going to be rather difficult. Um, and also where you're going to get uh, air. To, well, there's plenty of oxygen, so they can uh, chemically combine with rocks on the moon. Uh, but you're going to need wa water, hydrogen yep. to breathe. You're going to um, need hydrogen to make a hydrocarbon to give you rocket fuel. Um, so are there any energy sources on the moon apart from just sunlight? Well, that's the interesting question and why a lot of people want to go to it. Are there things on the moon that we can use as energy sources? Now, there may be water, as we'll talk about in a second, and there also may be helium-3. Okay, so helium-3 is an isotope. Those who've done the stars part of this course will have heard much about isotopes. That's right. Isotopes are things with the same number of protons in the nucleus but different number of neutrons. Yep. So normally helium has two neutrons and two, two protons. That's called helium-4. That's the normal one that we have, you experience in your life. When you're on your party balloons <laughs> and right. things and making silly voices. But uh, on Earth, a very small fraction would be helium-3, which is it's got two protons but only one neutron. And it's stable. So it's common and it's what we call stable. So it actually is along for and lives for essentially ever, not quite. But common, it's not a very large fraction of the helium. That's right. There's not a lot of helium-3 on Earth. But some people think maybe there's a lot of helium-3 on the moon. Now, the reason this becomes interesting is nuclear fusion. If we have some helium-3, we have some hydrogen, well, that can fuse together to create helium-4, a hydrogen, and energy. So we, again, in the stars, we talked about the fusion that works in the sun, which is just combining hydrogen to make helium. But that's very, very difficult. That's right. Helium-3 is a much more easy fusion reaction. It's um, actually a, almost a practical fusion reaction. That's right. People point to even on Earth that if we had a lot of helium-3, we could create nuclear fusion, and now we have a great new fuel source. So it's been a series of fascination for people to look and understand helium-3 for how easy it is to use. So is there going to be helium-3 on the moon? I mean, it's, there's not much on Earth. There's not much on Earth. And the question is, well, where could it come from? Now, one of the biggest proponents of this was Harrison Schmidt, uh, a geologist on Apollo 17, the last mission. Uh, being the geologist on a moon mission, he also gathered the most moon rocks. They had over 100 kilograms. I think 740 different rocks were brought back. So he's a geologist and obviously knows what he's talking about. And he's long been of the proponent as actually has science fiction that maybe there's a lot of helium-3 on the moon. Now, where would it come from? Yes, I mean, uh, generally speaking, you think the moon's made of the same stuff as the Earth. So why would it have helium-3 when Earth doesn't? Well, the question is, it's actually potentially brought to the moon by the sun. Now, the Earth, we know, has a magnetic field, protects us from radiation, protects us a lot from that solar wind, including the ionized isotopes and particles that come through it. But the moon doesn't. So the wind from the sun, which we talk about again in the stars, of course, um, doesn't normally get to the Earth. It's deflected away, but it can just slam straight into the surface of the moon. That's right. And it just piles on there. And it piles for four billion years. And even if there's not a lot of helium-3 in it per wave, if you've been piling it on for four billion years, maybe there's a lot of helium-3 on the moon. But it wouldn't be a gas. I mean, helium is normally a gas. and Any gas from the moon is going to escape. It doesn't have enough gravity and it's too hot. So any gas will just escape into space. So where would it actually be? So potentially it could be stored in the rocks. And this actually starts to raise the problem. It's one of these ideas where people said, hey, maybe it's a great idea. There could be helium-3 there. But we actually don't have a lot of evidence or data to say there's helium-3. Some of the recent missions to uh, the moon are analyzing their samples, like Chang'e 5 is using their lunar samples on the far side to see, is there any helium here? 
but we really don't have strong evidence that points to there's uh, enough helium-3 on the moon to even be worth it. So if we get lucky, it could be that all this, both helium-4 and helium-3, that's been blasted out from the sun over the last four and a half billion years, some fraction of those helium-3 have become embedded in rocks on the surface of the moon, and that you could, I don't know, bait the rocks and get it out, and then pump it into your portable fusion reactor and have huge amounts of power. That's right, and some principle. people said maybe there's even so much we can bring it back to the Earth. These are the really out there optim optimistic people. But maybe there isn't. But maybe there isn't. But there could be something else.